Power Fob was a collaborative concept demonstration undertaken between Defence Equipment and Support, the Canadian Department of National Defence and British Forces Cyprus at Episcopi Garrison in July 2011. The aim of the demonstration was to show how fuel consumption in a fob could be reduced using an open systems approach. The main objective of Power Fob is ultimately to save fuel being unnecessary taken forward to a forward operating base, thus reducing the fully burdened cost of energy of getting fuel to the point of use on the battlefield. Now this isn't anything about tree hugging or saving trees, this is about genuinely about saving lives. Important activity this, it's the first time ever been, it's ever been tried in, um, in the world. We understand that we have to be more efficient with fuel. Um, as General Petraeus has said, that 80% of all surface transport in Afghanistan is moving fuel around. That's a massive burden on the supply chain. So that, as well as the effort to move it, that's the troops that are exposed to protect it. And it's the resilience of the troops at the other end who need it. All of this work here at PowerFob is about improving that resilience. We are here at the British PowerFob exercise on an invitation from the, our UK partners. So we have similar equipment, similar patterns of usage of electricity, and similar concerns with our energy footprint. So we've decided through an agreement to share together the sort of data and witness what they're doing in exchange when we do the equivalent in Canada under cold weather, most probably Arctic weather, we we'll try to make it miserable for them. Um, we hope uh, to invite them to come and see and get, share with them the data so they can use it also to improve the, the types of system that we are using. The vast majority of our climate uh, research is done um, out in, in the field in the Antarctic in remote locations, which gives us the same logistic problems as the, the FOBs themselves in Afghanistan. So that's why we decided, uh, when invited, to be involved with the Power FOB, so we can exchange knowledge and ideas. And it gives us an opportunity to actually pool government resources and knowledge and funding to actually start and make a, a serious impact on the climate that we're actually studying. Uh, the Brits asked us to come and look at what's here and of course I've got my own mission uh, and that's to look at the things that the Brits are doing and see what of those things can we do with the Marine Corps. Uh, not necessarily the same companies but some of the same concepts. And also to try to work with the, the Brits and if, if something just doesn't make sense well at least I'm looking at it from a different point of view than, than maybe they are and so I can ask the question why does this make sense? And we have the opportunity to work together. Some of the things we're going to both do, some of the things only one of us is going to do, and some of the things neither of us is going to do. The purpose of PowerFob was to demonstrate at the concept level the fuel efficiencies that could be achieved, investigating demand and generator management, energy storage and renewables, and how they might be applied in a military environment as opposed to looking at a company's individual products. We've had a lot of interesting conversations with various people from different spheres of both the MOD and other organisations about what different requirements are from people who are actually going to be using the kit rather than from just people who are going to be potentially signing the cheques. So we've been talking to the signals and we've been talking to the Royal Engineers and we've been getting some idea of the realistic applications of this and how it's going to be used in theatre rather than just the concept which is what we had before. For the military, we needed a more highly durable solution. So this is a polycarbonate-based um, material which protects the solar cells. And you may be able to see that we've actually fired a couple of rounds to ensure that the solar cell carries on after even this sort of amount of, of damage and, uh, to the panel. Well, here in Cyprus, the conditions are similar to what they're going to be out there in theatre. It gives us a real good insight into what environment the users are operating in, um, and it's really exciting to be working with the MOD. The great advantage of coming here and, and operating at PowerFob is that using the kit in an operational context means that it's been subjected to the heat and the sand and the dust and it proves that, that it still works, but also the ability to, to use the real life loads that, that, are, that are used in, in, in FOBs and, and tactical bases means that it's, we've actually 
demonstrated and trialled just how inefficient current operation really is. You know, we've demonstrated that up to 30% inefficiency in the utilisation of, of the uh, environmental control units, the air conditioning units. And, that, and we proved that that can be completely eliminated with, uh, with our automatic phase balancing system. And we wouldn't, simply wouldn't have been able to do that unless something like PowerFob um, was there. The job is broken down into three tasks. Task one is to look at the generator side um, using storage and demand management and renewables to work with the in-service um, FEPS uh, diesel generators to understand how we can reduce the uh, use of fossil fuel by up to 50%. The power consumption baseline used to test the power fob demonstration against was obtained in an active operational environment using FOB Katina in Afghanistan and then we're replicating that power cycle uh, with realistic uh, energy loads but also load banks because we can't afford to have 80 soldiers running around 24 hours a day doing the same thing and it gives us a nice stable background so we can test different technologies against exactly the same scenario. The objective is to look at what the baseline is to understand how we uh, use the current FEPS um, diesel generators both in a sided i.e. separate um, operations and in a parallel where they work together um, gather how much fuel is used and, and then baseline that. And then we add in a number of different variables. So we will add in some energy storage, um, bring in batteries and managing that storage, uh, charging up those batteries when, and using FEPS at their maximum and then discharging it and then powering the whole camp with those batteries. Just giving storage gives you an enormous amount of um, potential in saving energy but also surety of supply. The demonstration looked at ways to reduce and manage demand for power by adapting in-service equipment, adding metering and control software to make it more intelligent. This allows the user to prioritise demands and even turn them off where appropriate. Um, another strategy is to reduce that demand. Arguably you should do that first. So management of the demand, uh, demand energy management. And we've added some metering smarts and some control smarts and some software that will allow us to keep the energy demand down. Um, either by uh, turning it off or prioritising its use. That makes a big difference as well, so that's the second thing. And the third thing is to uh, actually use the generators more efficiently. So being able to start them and stop them. So starting them automatically from an energy management system is, has never been done before with these diesel generators, certainly not in the UK. And we've achieved that over this graph. That's been really, really beneficial. So you put all those together and that gives you a good baseline and an architecture to work with. And then should you wish to add renewables, you can add those in as you wish. So around here we've got wind turbines, we've got photovoltaics, and we've got local, local sensors of, that we can add in and scavenge energy from. Black, can you pull that just over to you a little bit? We are directly wired into the grid with our 300 watt solar panel in uh, as, as uh, close a manner as possible as the soldiers would use in the field. Calculation we passed. Okay. 46 watts. Okay. All right. That's twice the last one. But it was a. Incre include that in one open architecture, and that will then reduce your uh, generation needs from the diesel generator and will top up the batteries. This approach enabled the user to completely switch off the generators overnight for more than six hours while still maintaining the camp facilities. This reduces the camp signature overnight and allows the occupants to get a better night's sleep. All in all, that will and should reduce your um, energy demand and, and use of fuel quite considerably. PowerFob's definitely been a success. We've met some interesting people, we've got some good angles for, you know, for future collaborations and uh, yeah, it's been good. Task two is looking at um, improving insulation on in-service ITC shelters. Shelters in Afghanistan we know consume 50% uh, of the fuel um, on air conditioning. Um, we've got this data from metered camps in Afghanistan. 
this task basically is looking at trying to improve the insulation on those shelters so that we can then drive down the air conditioning load and thus save money on the fuel going into the generators. We've had one shelter without any insulation at all, one shelter with our current insulation, and then we've got a couple of new products from some companies that we're comparing to our existing shelter. If I can just explain the technology behind the insulation, we're using reflective technology to reflect infrared heat back so that we don't have to consider extra air conditioning. The uh, current insulation, it's um, a combination of uh, reflective technology and there's a small bubble there there's actually a carrier for the reflective insulation but that adds to the thermal properties the new insulation we've managed to reduce the bulk by 70 percent we're using reflective insulation in a different manner we're introducing an air gap which will give us a standoff to enable the uh, reflection to achieve better thermal efficiency we're here to provide some of our um, expertise in using the thermal images with the shelter analysis that's going to be happening here at the Power Fob. Essentially what we're going to do is um, take a look at the interior of the tents and use the infrared camera to um, take a look at the various configurations of the tent and ensure that the reference tents and the other tents are being tested under similar conditions and essentially the infrared camera will help us make sure that, that, uh, that the testing is valid in that way and that you're comparing an apple to an apple. It's 35 degrees in the opening and it drops down to 24 in the cooler area. So it gives you an idea that heat is coming into the tent through that hole. One of the things that we will recommend and that we'll try it later on during the trial is to put a loose bag of sand, a sand bag in the corner from the external just to stop the air from rushing in. Life in the form of the soldier, inside the tent, being cooler, it's obviously a morale boost. Some of it's uh, just old standard issue stuff, you know, but with a, with a bit of a modern twist, like some of the insulation inside the tents. And that definitely works, you know, it cools it down. Um, and what we found is that um, uh, two of the products look as if they're going to save us um, in the region of 10 to 20% saving on the power drawn by the air conditioner. And one of the, the implements that we're using is the communications equipment which is fitted to the uh, Land Rover that you can see behind me. Communications are vital for every part uh, of our sort of forces use. One area that uh, we're keen to try and cut down on is our fuel use. Uh, the, the Land Rover that you see behind me is fitted for radio. It can come with a complex or simple fit. Uh, these radios are connected to uh, a bank of batteries which sit in the back of the rover. They can be charged independently with a lightweight field generator which of course uses fuel or use the vehicle engine to charge the batteries. When people are using these vehicles it's, it's quite key that they're normally quiet because they're keeping an eye on certain things. In order for us to, to try and maintain that uh, we're using a range of different methods, solar PV, and fuel cells to, to watch that we can keep back the attrition rate of the batteries uh, with the vehicle not running at all. There, there's uh, a myriad of options that we, that we can employ. Uh, the solar PV uh, and the fuel cells, you know, using this technology will stop soldiers having to turn the vehicle on to charge vehicle batteries. And, in the sort of situation that we're in at the moment, it's very, very simple for the guys to, to stop, roll up, and as you can see behind me, just lay out on that, and then just be charging those batteries uh, during daylight hours or with the fuel cells, you know, all through the evening. Uh, we, we've absolutely no need to start that engine at all. So they take this stuff and they, they recharge their batteries. They can stay out for multiple days. Uh, they don't have the problem of carrying a lot of extra stuff. And it, it's, it works, it's just great stuff. We've got a simulated load on at the moment, which we've worked out from a baseline of transmission cycles. And uh, every 15 minutes, it's my unfortunate job to sit here and, and measure these and make sure uh, we're working.
Other areas investigated in the demonstration included the kitchen as one of the main consumers of power within a fob. For instance, here on the, on the top of the fob wall, we have put on 524 watt, 12 volt solar panels, connected down to two charge controllers. The car batteries we have here only can manage to receive 12 volt, and from those batteries, we put it into a cable, of course, into an inverter, so we have 220 volt. And from that box, we can go with a cable and into the FOP kitchen and supply them with the energy they need, like that. Today we've turned the OFCS to a solar panel, which is hanging on the side of the FOB. It's working all right, we turned on about half eight in the morning, so we'll find out how long the power lasts. At the minute, it seems to be working okay. We've actually got hot water uh, getting hooked up with solar panels for the pan bash area for the cleaners to clean. Provision of hot water for cooking, cleaning and laundry can also use a lot of power. Using natural resources to heat this water reduces power demand and therefore fuel consumption. And we have come here to Powerfob in Cyprus to prove to the Ministry of Defence how simple and easy it is to gain heat energy from the sun and heat water. Uh, we've developed this system to be simple and easy to operate for the troops. Simply a hot water cylinder, pretty much the same as a domestic cylinder in your house. Uh, only instead of heating up with a central heating boiler or electricity, we're heating it up using a solar collector. The British have selected a very good site to do their exercise, in the sense that we had consistent hot weather. If we did the trial and some days we would have had 20 degrees Celsius and some days 40 degrees Celsius and some days 14, I don't think we could have had a very smooth running trial like we did in the past two weeks. If we can prove that this technology works, we believe that there's a case for investment, especially in these renewable energies. The further benefit potentially that we maybe help, we might want to think about is um, when we eventually do withdraw from a site, then perhaps we might want to think about leaving a sustainable legacy behind uh, and therefore perhaps gifting some of the renewable energy systems to the local elders or the local village. We're very keen to actually start and implement these in the Antarctic and I don't think we would have been in this position without PowerFob because we'd have been looking at individual technologies rather than systems. It's been a great learning experience, so many people here, some great technologies, some great ideas, some great people. It's been an environment that lends itself to, to learning between the, the community and, and to sharing ideas.